Maskell Van, and today we are talking about how to start the perfect bar. Because everybody kind of sometimes needs that jump start on like, all right, what should I have in the cabinet? So what are the basic rules or non-rules of starting your own home bar? You drink whatever you like, it's about feeding, it's about like uh, your mood. But I will always start with like a, a, a sparkling wine. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting, it's very festive. Uh, it's a nice way to welcome your guests uh, if you have your own bar. So what's the good place to begin? Uh, most of people, they are having uh, champagne at home, but I really like to have uh, a sparkling wine, sparkling wine from uh, Loire Valley, it's what we have right now. It's 100% uh, Gros Lot, uh, don't, nobody really knows that grapes, but it's amazing wine. Uh, you have like a little of uh, uh, apple taste at the end. It's perfect for aperitif uh, to welcome your guest. Right, and does having the rosé add a sense of occasion for people, or why is it good to have a rosé? Rosé just like all year long. You don't need like a special occasion to have like ro rosé wine or rosé sparkling wine. And so then obviously, you know, beyond the sparkling, you want to have a few whites and a few reds on hand. When you're thinking about what whites to keep, what's the balance of looking for the right white? Uh, I always keep a, a, a white Sancerre. It's always a classic. It's a Sauvignon Blanc. Everybody knows Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, you can have like a, a minerality, uh, some uh, lemony uh, flavor. Uh, the wine I will drink every day. With a Sancerre, I will go like with uh, seafood, uh, selfish, also uh, goat cheese. Goat cheese, it goes very well with goat cheese. But you can also have a nice uh, cheese or charcuterie plate. It's gonna be, you cannot be wrong with that. Yeah, and then you also have a Riesling. Why is Riesling your second choice for kind of the backup wine? Most of people know Riesling as like a sweet Riesling, but in France, Riesling, it's dry Riesling. Uh, it's also uh, very fruity with a nice color, gold color. Uh, always interesting compared to the Sancerre. And so when you're thinking about whites, is it important to kind of have two different types on hand? One with a lot of mineral, one with a lot of fruit, so that then you'll always be prepared for whatever your guests want? Most of the uh, people they are looking for uh, fruity wine or dry white wine. Don't, right. You can have, uh, uh, it's a good balance with the Sancerre and the, the, the Riesling. And so then moving on to the reds, you know, no matter the time of year, what are the types of qualities that you should be looking for if you're going to keep two reds stocked in your pantry? I will start with the, the Bordeaux because you cannot be wrong with Bordeaux. Merlot, Cabernet, it's a classic. Uh, and I really love the, the Gamay because it's not very seasonal. It, it can be summertime, right. fall, spring, or even winter time. Right, so you should always have one. You always have a gamay. You will have like some uh, plum, even peach flavor uh, uh, coming from that bottle and it, it's very fruity and round. It's, you can drink like fresh or even like at room temperature. Uh, it's always nice to have a gamay. And then when picking a Bordeaux, because obviously it's such a classic and there are so many different choices to go with, where do you even begin in selecting your Bordeaux in terms of having a crowd pleaser? What, what did I learn in, in, uh, in New York? It's like most of people, they go uh, for wine with the grapes and Merlot is very soft. Merlot can be like good for summertime because it's soft, brown, and it's also good for wintertime. Bordeaux, it's always a blend of Merlot Cabernet. Some of them, they are not, but in this case. And also, by the way, this one, it's biodynamic. Bordeaux, like it's very interesting. So then if you want conversation topics as well, that's another way to go, to have an organic wine or a biodynamic uh, oh, wine. Yes, and in Bordeaux it's very uh, rare to have a, a biodynamic, it, they just started to, to be like biodynamic organic. So then you can, you know, bring that up as a conversation topic and sound like you know what you're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so then when you're thinking about keeping wine, on hand at home, what are your other tips for making sure that you're storing your wine properly, that you're keeping the right amount? How much wine should people have at home and how should they store it? You can buy like a case of each, but you will not drink right away everything. Right. Like, uh, I would say you can keep like three or four bottles of each mm -hmm. and you cannot be wrong. Also make sure you're not putting them uh, by the window or near the sunlight. And if you were gonna say, okay, we don't want the basics, we want you know, some crazy delicious bottle that everyone will be impressed by, what would you recommend? Come to Vinsilva. <laughs> Perfect answer, just come here and have a drink. Well, thank you so much You're welcome. for teaching Salty. us about how to stock our bar properly with our most basic wines. Really appreciate it.